Let's look at some simple examples here of pretend we are in a Google Doc and we are going to have a stack of commands that the user has done and we want to be able to undo those commands and undo multiple commands. So um, here's an example. So we're going to create a stack of commands. Now, in reality, when you're making something like Google Docs and you have a, a stack of commands for undo purposes, it's a little bit more complicated than this in terms of how you have to build a command object and stuff. We're going to keep it simple, and our stack of commands are just going to be strings describing what the user did. But first, we're going to so we're going to create a stack of strings, and we'll call that stack commands. We'll say new stack. And then we're going to push a bunch of commands onto the undo stack. So even though this is simplified, this is literally how every application that you use that has an undo feature, which hopefully is all of them, um, actually works. So we're going to say commands.push. We always use push when we're adding something to a stack. And let's say our first command is to insert the string hello. Cool. Um, and then we'll do some other stuff. I'm just going to make up a bunch of stuff here. We're then going to push, um, we're going to insert a comma. Oops. Helps if I close out my quotes. We're then going to insert a space. So, and the way this usually works, like in something like Google Docs, if I type like hello relatively quickly together, that's that's entered as a single command in the undo stack. So when you pause in Google Docs, it will capture what you did as a single operation, a single command, it'll put it on the undo stack. So this would be like, I type hello, I pause, I type comma, I pause, I type a space, I pause, I'm not sure what to type next. I finally figure it out and I'm going to type, I'm going to insert world. It's hard to get all those quotes to line up. Um, I pause again. And then I finally insert uh, a question mark because I'm unsure if this is what I want. And I wait. And then I delete something, so this will be a little different. We'll say delete. I delete just the question mark. And then I push on insert. I'm going to insert an exclamation point. There we go. So there's our undo stack. Let's print this. Print the stack. The top of the stack is on the far right. So I just want to be super clear about that. If we do system out println, and I just put the stack here, go ahead and run this. And you'll see that the last command pushed, the top of the stack, is on the far right. So we, we in, in our heads, we think of and should think of a stack as a vertical thing. The top of the stack is on top. When it's printed, it's a horizontal thing, and the top of the stack is on the right. So the visually, spatially, it's a, a little bit different. So you, if it helps, you can like rotate it in your head um, so it makes more sense. I'm going to hit run two. This looks good. Okay, it's all in the order that we expect. All right, so let's uh, let's add a little bit of code here showing off how we can pop stuff. Let's say the user, um, we're going to say simulate the user pressing the undo button four times. So we'll say four into i equals zero, i is less than four, i plus plus. 
So let's have a little loop here that runs four times. And we will pop each thing off in turn. In a real program, we'd have to have a whole execution engine that helps with this, but we're not going to really worry about that. Instead, we will just print undo and then concatenate the command with that. That's it. So we should see it undo the insert of the exclamation point, see it undo the deletion of the question mark, see it undo the insertion of the question mark, and see it undo the insertion of the world.